is wrong, my pet. I fear my dream. I've seen Costa Rica will never come true. Well, we should go then. So that's pretty much how it happened. She wanted to take a trip to Costa Rica. Liberia, Costa Rica to be exact. Where we picked up our snazzy RAV4 rental car and made our way to Playa del Coco. Tried to make our way there. We made it. We got lost. Not my fault. Interesting note, trash is collected twice a week from roadside bins placed every few hundred yards. Don't change the subject, you drove. Costa Rica doesn't have an address system, but thanks to landmarks, we made our way here. We wanted to go here. But turned and drove down here where we got this. Where I got this map. Okay, fine. And finally made our way back here. Here's the view from our rooftop deck at Bahia Turquesa Residences, AKA Coco Sunset Vacation Club in beautiful Playa del Coco, Guanacosta, Costa Rica. Whew, that was a mouthful. As night fell, we passed out while the Costa Rican landscape burned around us thanks to discarded glass. What does the broken glass do? It magnifies the sun's rays, causing fires. Hmm. The next day, we explored Costa Rica and found where the local dead people hung out. Hang out. I wonder if they burned to death by broken glass. Hang out. They're still there, aren't they? Huh. So after getting lost a few more times... Not my fault. I did find Playa del Tamarindo. Where we had a wonderful seaside lunch at Pangas Beach Club. Pangas? Pangas? Pangas, Pangas. Pangas. Welcome to Costa Rica. Woo! <laughs> Our dorky behavior was enough to lure the monkeys over. Howler monkeys range in size from 22 to 36 inches, excluding their tails. They have lifespans of 15 to 20 years. Most howler monkey species live in groups of 6 to 15 animals with multiple females and up to 3 adult males. Males are easy to spot. Not only are they larger, but their balls hang lower than grandpa's on a sunny day. Howler monkeys are widely considered to be the loudest land animal. Look at those balls. Shut up. According to Guinness Book of World Records, their vocalizations can be heard for up to 3 miles. Huh. When you open your mouth, it can be heard for up to 3 miles too. Ow. The monkeys would also pick cocoa beans and drop them down for the locals to eat. What? They drop chocolates. Those aren't chocolates. Well, no, they're bitter cocoa beans. Well, those chocolates are what makes howler monkeys a nuisance to the local Costa Ricans, much like pigeons are a nuisance to local people in parks here in the States. They even come with warning signs. A little bitter. Yeah. Do you hear him here responding? That night we paid guides to take us to see black sea turtles. I was certain that at the end of this road they were going to remove our kidneys. Turns out they didn't. Thankfully, several weeks prior to this night, a couple of turtles got together and did this. Mm. Which resulted in us being able to see this. And this. And this. Several weeks later, these came out of the sand. Oh my, there are so many of them. Most don't survive. Oh no. Run, Forrest, run! Look at the little guy go. You can do it! The little guy made it! I'm gonna call him Dave. <laughs> Over the next few days, we explored the area around Volcano Arenal. Where we stopped for a rest, and this guy... <laughs> ...condescend to buying these. Copy, copy. Huh? That was their greeting. Oh, that's right. It was... 
Copy, copy. Copy, copy. Ugh, you bought that hook, line, and sinker. Uh-uh. Yeah. See? That's got a ticket. Back on the road in Moile, Costa Rica. We came across Las Iguanas Restaurante. Which is famous for its iguanas in trees. Iguanas grow to about five feet long and some as much as six feet with body weights up to 20 pounds. They can fall up to 50 feet and land unhurt. Green iguanas are primarily herbivores and it is thought that juveniles often eat the feces from the adults in order to acquire the essential microflora to digest their low quality and hard to process vegetarian diet. Animal feces? That's disgusting. Yeah, why don't you have another one of those howler nuggets? Hmm. Many locals view these animals as a pest the way city slickers view rats. The abundance of iguanas is so much that they are popular roadkill, earning their name Pollo de Palo, or Chicken of the Trees. So we hiked up a dormant volcano called Cerro Chato. They told me we were going to a hot spring. After. After the hike, we were going to a hot spring. She said at the end of this journey, we would be soaking in a hot spring. Technically, that was true. This is a dormant volcano. The lava hole is now filled with water. Logic dictates it would be a hot spring. But this flat map is deceiving. As I found out later, it's a 3,740 foot climb. Oh, here is a lake and we are here. How could you not know there were signs? What the hell does 1.5 KMS mean? While Tubby here rested, I shot this beautiful vista. I was told that 20 minutes up these stairs, I'd be resting my aches in a hot spring. It was a total lie. It took a grueling hour just to get from here to here. Oh, you big baby. Christian, he's our friend and our guide. Christian and I had no problems. I was dead and Christian was mocking me. <laughs> it'll only be another 20 minutes. It'll only be another 20 minutes. After three hours and 1.8 miles, we were finally here where I got a shot of the volcano that I was assured would be spectacular. Turns out you can get great shots of it from the side of the road. That's not true. This is a shot from out the window of our air-conditioned car parked on the side of the highway. <laughs> but at this point, I was moments away from soothing hot water. It was cold. <laughs> it was freezing. So I made her get in. <gasps> oh my God, it's so cold. After all that, you're getting in. I ain't, but you are. Okay? Okay? Yeah. You gonna do it? What? <sighs> One, two. I love this part. Punk. <laughs> I get my revenge though. <laughs> you were freezing. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, so you're cold out there now, aren't you? I'm fine. No? Well. Why would I be cold? I meant to say hot. Hypothermia setting in? I was doing water ballet. So graceful. On our two hour journey back, we saw many animals, including the snake that peed on Christian. We call culebras. It's not poisonous snake. They eat some uh, insects. I don't know how to say, uh, like babosas. This deadly insect that amused Deanna. A frog that leapt away. And these itty bitty baby birds nesting in a bush. Woo! We just hiked up to Cerro. Chato hike up to the lake. <laughs> Excruciating. It's great. Finally, we made our way to the hot spring. This place is beautiful. Yeah, it's like a multimillionaire's backyard tropical pool. 
After a refreshing dip in the hot pools, this gecko mistook my girth and climbed me like a tree. Hey, look. Geckos. He just climbed up me. Oh my god, he's so cute! Oh my god, he's so cute! You say that about everything, even the dog. Well, come on, look how cute she is! Oh my god, he's so cute! The following morning, we showered under a rock waterfall at the premier suite of the Mountain Paradise Hotel. That's why you love me. That is why I love you. On our journey to Monte Verde, we stumbled across a kawadi eating roadkill. And about to become roadkill. Get hit. Okay, go out, pick him up, and move him. Well, no, I want to throw something over off the side of the road. Yeah, for him he'll to still eat. come back and eat whatever he's trying to eat. Hey, move. Okay. He's smart. Then we discovered the WB Frog's retirement location. We're here at Toad Hall. I gave Deanna the camera and all she shot was this bird. The lighting is bad. Hey, I did a great job of narrating our journey to Monte Verde. On our way to Monte Verde, this is probably the worst road that we've been on and it's, you know, it's not too bad. We've been on much worse, you know, back home or whatever. It's very bumpy. It's seriously nice to be back on an actual road. My brain feels like it's not rattling anymore. That night we went out for dinner and the resort's parking gate was closed. Oh, you're not gonna tell this story, are you? I got out of the car and I ran to the front gate to get the clicker. And when I ran back to the car, this is what happened. Did you get it? The weirdest thing. They said that uh, the pillar, we just go up to the gate and then you yell Monte Verde Country Inn to the pillar and the gate opens. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's voice activated. You go to the pillar and you just yell at it and it works. Really? Yeah. And so I'm, it's, right there? Uh-huh. Monteverdi Country Inn. Maybe it wasn't. Nothing's happening. Maybe it wasn't loud enough. Monte Verde Country Inn. I, I think I think you need, I think you need to do it louder. <laughs> What's a Monte Verde Country Inn? <laughs> you dickhead! <laughs> I kept trying to push the clicker to uh, to make the gate work, but it, it just it wouldn't work. You're such a butt. I got my <sighs> revenge though. I booked a zip lining tour oh. and I prepaid for it. I had no interest in zip lining. Yes, you did. You just backed out last minute. No, I didn't. It's the stupidest thing in the world. Some guy hooks you up to a cable and throws you to another tree. What? Too scary for you? No, I mean I don't like roller coasters, but not because I'm scared. I just don't like them. He's scared. It's nothing, it's nothing. It's Holy Spirit, not the ship. Sing the song. Holy Spirit, <laughs> oh my god. Listen to you. Oh my god, you sound scared. At least I did it. <sighs> Whatever. What did you see? Blue sky? It's the stupidest thing. It's not like you take a slow ride through treetop canopies and see monkeys and macaws. No, you're on it at 40 miles an hour for 40 seconds. 40 seconds! Sit down, Yana. 
Um, Cross your legs. Stop my, stop my feet. Cross your legs. Open them at the end. Yep. This is gonna be a little fun. Oh great. <laughs> After that silliness, we headed out to the Skywalk, which is a series of five suspended bridges. This one is 985 feet long, suspended 151 feet off the ground. Wow, that's really high. It's like 15 stories. It did bring us eye level with howler monkeys. We even got to see a mother with her baby. I can see the baby right above, yep. behind. Yep, moving she's right on now. her back. Okay, now it moved. Yep, she's moving down, baby's on her back. On to the other tree, yeah. Just moving. Oh, I mm -hmm. love howler monkeys. Look at that. Then got up close with the orange-bellied trogon, whose primary contribution to nature is spreading avocado seeds. Very like a nice video. Mm -hmm. You see the bird does these pretty, these clothes. Then we saw this unidentified wingman with a really long beak. I bet he's overcompensating. We came across a sloth snoozing in a tree. The reason that we don't see them yeah, they in daytime because they are nocturnals. They can be more perfect than this. Yeah. Monkey sloth problems. See his nails, his claws. They're very sharp like a knife. I spotted this guy. No, you didn't. Once a week, sloths visit the base of the tree where they do the poo dance, which is wiggling their tushy to make their business. Huh. Next, we saw the resplendent Quetzal. Have you heard about Quetzal? Yes, I mean, I'd love to see a Quetzal. Oh my god, I am, I might. Splendid Kate's out. Shut up. That was you all dorky. Oh, my life would be complete if I could see the resplendent Kate's out. I never said that. My life would be complete if I saw a resplendent Kate's out in the wild. See? Whatever. We had a close encounter with a howler. Which I was quick to capture from behind her. Chicken. What? You're the animal professional. If we walked into a room and there was a problem with an electronic gadget, I would take that. But this, I don't know nothing about animals. So I shot from behind you. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, what do we do? Will he jump on us? No. I highly doubt it. Well, this is interesting. There he goes. Wildlife was nosing around the trash cans. Quite a Monday. Squatty. They're so cute. I love them. Oh my God, they're so cute. Shut up. Someone has had a life ambition to see macaws in the wild. So we hired out the Palo Verde Boat Tour Company to take us along the Tempisky River, where we saw this itty bitty iguana taking a dip. That's not an iguana, that's a crocodile. That's not a knife, that's a knife. Crikey, let's poke him with a stick. The crocodiles in Costa Rica are actually the American crocodiles, and they hunt by remaining completely motionless in the water. When prey is close enough, they attack. 
grabbing the animal and drowning it with a maneuver referred to as the death roll. In order to attract fish for their meal, they may even regurgitate bits of food. Next up, this monkey almost became croc food. That's a capuchin. They were lazily hanging out in the trees. Alright, look at the water. Do you see the monkey? Do you see the water? Do you see the crocodile? Mm -hmm. Bye bye monkey. Bye bye monkey. Look at a crocodile. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Capuchins have long prehensile tails that are the same length of their bodies. They are among the most intelligent primates demonstrated by their ability to use tools in search of food. These monkeys are promiscuous maters and use facial expressions such as protruding lips and vocalizations to attract mates. I want that spot. <laughs> Next up, we saw some baby gators. Those aren't baby gators. That's a baby brown basculus, known as the Jesus Christ lizard because it can walk on water. I like to think of him as the eight pound, six ounce newborn infant Jesus. Don't even know a word yet. I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt because it says, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party. Shake and bake, baby. Shake and bake. Do they blow it up? Yeah. Oh. We chase this egret and ducks deep into the forest in search of the macaw. I thought this was macaw country. They're elusive. Too many people have plucked them out of nature and stuck them in cages at home. This is the duck-billed platypus. That's a black crown heron. Look at him, all smug. Like, this is my tree, I own it. He does own it. He's just renting it. This bird is a Fraser crane. Nope, that's a little blue heron. Little blue herons feed mainly on a diet of fish and crustaceans. But this versatile predator may also consume a variety of frogs, tadpoles, insects, snakes, and lizards. Another bird which is not a macaw. Nope, it's a great blue heron, migratory from Canada. He really likes to winter in the deep south. Don't you? This is a pigeon. Nope. Chicken? It's a green heron. This white bird surely must be a macaw. Nope, it's a giant egret. Aggression among nestling giant egrets is common and large chicks frequently kill their smaller siblings. This behavior is known as siblicide. What is siblicide? It's when your siblings kill you and eat you. I wonder if this tree's siblings are trying to kill it. So they pushed it off to the corner there. And they're like, jump in tree, jump, go for it. Jump in and drown. But will the tree drown in water? It could. I think the siblings are trying to kill this tree. Enough with tree death. Time for the grand finale. Oh, wow. Ooh. Those were ducks, no macaws. Nope. After the boat tour, our guide took us to a monkey hotel. This is a monkey hotel. Monkey hotel. Yeah. That's baby monkey. One, two, baby monkey. Uh -huh. Over there. Look at the tiny little yeah. baby. Yeah. Primito. This guy is mother. Oh, she's coming out. Is she coming out? Oh, there's another one right there. Oh, there's another one right there. Oh, my God. I love my car. Muy bonito. Oh my goodness. Tiene rojo, rojo, azul, azul, amarillo. Rojo, azul y amarillo. Yellow, yes. amarillo. Oh, my life would be complete if I saw a macaw's nest. I didn't say that. If I saw a macaw nest in the wild, my life would be complete. So how does it feel to have a completed life? Fantastic! We hope you enjoyed our trip to Costa Rica. Yeah, it was so much fun! Check out this video here where we go to Hawaii! Or this video where we go to Catalina on a dolphin excursion. Yeah, as always, please subscribe.
for more of our antics. <laughs>